Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And if you're following along real time, or at least almost real time, you know that we are squarely in the middle of July. And that last week we took a week off for the 4th of July holiday to try to catch up on some other Baltimore Heritage business. Um, so thanks so much for hanging in there with us and letting us uh, try to keep the ship afloat, if you will. Alright, today we're going to talk about Little Tavern Hamburgers, the Little Tavern Hamburger Shop. And I'm here at the corner of 32nd and Greenmount Avenue, and behind me is a diminutive crenellated castle wall. You might know it if you've ever been to the Saturday Waverly Farmer's Market, or maybe if you've been to the Venerable Pete's Grill that's just around the corner, where Michael Phelps, our own Olympic champion, uh, would refuel on his 10,000 calorie breakfast as he was training for the Olympics. Um, we're just around the corner from there. Today it's part of a hip hot chicken and fish place, I believe, uh, but a number of years ago it started out its life as a Little Tavern hamburger shop. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about. So we're going to jump in. Little Tavern is not the nation's oldest uh, hamburger franchise, hamburger chain. That claim goes to White Castle. 1921, 100 years ago, White Castle was started in Wichita, Kansas. But our own Harry Duncan was not too far behind. In 1927, he moves from St. Louis to Louisville and starts not one, but five Little Tavern hamburger shops. He was going big. He was going, he was thinking really big, in fact, and, and the next year, just one year later, he moves to Washington, D.C. Um, he keeps his five shops in Louisville, but moves to Washington, D.C. and begins building little taverns all over the place. By 1950, there are 50 little taverns in just Baltimore and Washington, just the Baltimore and Washington area. So he's doing very well. Um, now, Duncan did not have a sort of a long family tradition of being in the diner or hamburger business, but he did have a little bit of background by the time he got to Louisville. In St. Louis in the early 1920s, he was creating what he called baby beef burgers, um, and he developed a slogan, buy them by the bag. So maybe you were here many years ago and you took him up on that. You had one of the Little Tavern hamburgers or a whole bag full of Little Tavern hamburgers. Um, and in fact, in St. Louis, he claims to have, been, have invented the cheeseburger. Now that's a claim that's challenged. There is a gentleman named Lionel Stern burger who in the, also in the early 1920s he was 16 working at his father's uh, restaurant called the uh, right spot in Pasadena California and he claims to have invented the cheeseburger um, sadly we can debate that all day long but neither uh, Duncan nor Sternberger and if you're gonna have a serious claim to inventing the cheeseburger that's a pretty good name for it but neither of them got the uh, trademark that claim went to a gentleman named Lewis Ballast at the Humpty Dumpty restaurant in Denver, California, Denver, Colorado. He's the one who held the trademark. Um, but regardless of who invented the cheeseburger, the Little Tavern burgers were a hit. Um, so what were they? They were always a square. They could be eaten in a few bites. They had some onions uh, pressed on top, a slice of dill pickle on the bottom, and exactly one dollop, never two, of uh, ballpark mustard. And if it was the 1940s or 50s or 60s or maybe even 70s, and you were a teenager, it was probably late at night, you would go into one of the little taverns um, and you would, uh, it would be bright lights, uh, unglare, glaring bright lights. The guy behind the grill was undoubtedly surly, and the burgers you were eating were notoriously greasy, belly bombers, some called them, um, and you loved it. What was not to love about that? Um, uh, so, uh, so 1940s and 50s, that was all the rage. Uh, the teenagers called it Club LT, if you were in the know. Um, uh, and, uh, and things went well. The restaurant started out uh, kind of like White Castles, and the building behind me is Little Tavern Number 2, so one of the earliest Little Taverns in Baltimore. Um, but by the 1930s, Little Tavern had found an architect, um, although sort of an architect, um, to develop their own style of building. Um, a gentleman named Luther Reason Ray had graduated with a drafting degree from Columbia, and he called himself an architect, although he never actually got his license. He did design houses and commercial buildings in Washington, D.C., and he designed the Tudor-style little taverns that were the signature buildings with their green tile roof. Ray, incidentally, also went on to found uh, a company called Moldolithic uh, Construction. This was back in the 1930s when re uh, mass replication was all the rage, including buildings, maybe like Little Tavern. And he founded a company called uh, the Structural Porcelain Company. 
guess what those green tiles were on the little tavern roofs? They were from the porcelain company. And, uh, and if you are a certain age like me, I'm going to say this, and I know you're going to know what I'm talking about. The other thing that Ray, uh, other porcelain tiles that Ray designed were those orange tiles on Howard Johnson's. Remember those? Um, those also came from our same uh, uh, Luther Ray. Um, things, uh, things went well for Little Taverns, but in 2008, the franchise officially closed. It closed, uh, the last restaurant closed. Um, but before we wrap up, let me say a word about Duncan. He sold the franchise in the 1980s um, uh, and made a lot of money. He, but he was also very civic-minded. He was head of the Boys Club of Washington, D.C. He founded the Boys Club of Silver Spring, where the company was headquartered. Um, and if you're ever sick and you go to the George Washington University Hospital, hospital in Washington, D.C., you'll go in through uh, the Harry Duncan lobby because he gave that hospital an amazing endowment. All right, final word is I said that the uh, franchise Little Tavern closed in the 1980s, but there was one Little Tavern that held on and became independent. It's out on Washington Boulevard near Laurel, Maryland, um, and it is now called the Little Tavern Donut Shop, and there you can get donuts and coffee. Little Tavern bragged that it had good coffee. That's what its slogan was, so you can get good coffee. And that little tavern says that it got the secret formula for the, uh, the, the mini hamburgers that Little Tavern was known for. So you can go out there and, uh, and sample a Little Tavern hamburger just the way it was always made. All right, thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.